Shingu Yabuki, aka the goofball of the King of Fighters franchise, was originally designed to tone down a little bit the serious and dark mood of the game where he was first introduced, K-Wave 97, but unexpectedly he ended up being loved so much by many of the fans that he became a recurring character and an essential fighter within the K-Wave roster. While it's true that Shingo was absent in the last two installments, it's hard to believe that someone who was meant to be a simple and plain everyday guy managed to obtain this level of popularity and being one of the most requested characters to make a comeback in K-Wave 15. In this video, we'll expose everything we know about Shingo and we'll know if he is just a comic foil to Kyo or if there is more to him that we didn't know before. As always, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified with every new video posted. Most of the King of Fighters tournaments were held to serve evil purposes and hidden agendas. Their organizing was usually shrouded in mystery and the hosts of the different competitions remain unknown until the very end where they unveil their malicious master plans. But there were exceptions to this rule as some tournaments didn't have any ill intentions behind their organizing. And such was the case of K-Wave 96. Despite the events that occurred at its conclusion, and it's thanks to it that the K-Wave brand became a worldwide phenomenon. The breathtaking matches between the world's strongest fighters were watched by millions of spectators from different parts of the planet, and our hero was one of them. Shingu Yabuki was a simple Japanese high school student. He used to spend most of his free time collecting figurines and was never interested in any martial art or fighting style. But that changed when he watched the K-Wave games on TV. He immediately became a huge fan of Team Japan, more specifically of their leader, Kyo Kusanagi. Shingo was fascinated by his ability to cast flame and dreamed to become like his new idol. If only he could meet and ask him how he could use fire so easily, but there was no way that would happen in this large world. He couldn't believe his luck when he discovered that Kyo was actually a student in the same high school as him. Since that day, he started pestering Kyo to teach him how to fight, relentlessly following him everywhere and begging him to become his disciple. Facing Shingo's perpetual supplications, Kyo had no choice but to accept his request. In exchange, his new pupil had to buy him meals every day. Saying that Shingo was happy to be trained by Kyo would be an understatement. He will finally be able to cast fire like he always dreamed. Little did he know, the flame was an inherited gift of the Kusanagi clan, and Kyo forgot to mention that. Maybe out of pity to not shatter Shingo's dreams, or he just didn't want to lose his daily free meals. Shingo began to carefully study each of Kyo's moves and wrote them in his notes, then started to practice every day by reproducing each of these moves, until he mastered most of Kyo's techniques to some degree of success. He looked forward for the next K-Wave competition, but this time Shingo was no longer a simple spectator. Luckily for him, the 97 edition allowed competitors to participate for the single entry branch and that was the best option for Shingo as he couldn't find any teammates. He fought ferociously against veteran fighters and even achieved some victories, but was eliminated before he could reach the finals. Still, he did well enough for a rookie to earn the acknowledgement of his master. As a reward for his efforts, Kyo gave him his gloves before he went finish his own battles. For some reason, Shingo believed that now he had more chances to throw flames and happily went to resume his training. But his happiness turned into great concern when he learned that Kyo disappeared shortly after the tournament's end. He searched for Kyo during the next two years but had no success in finding him. One day, he received a letter from another member of Team Japan, Benimaru. The letter was an invitation to join his team for the 99 edition of K-Wave. 
upon meeting with Benimaru, he discovered that not only the model didn't send any letter, but he as well received a letter with the same message, supposedly from Shingo. The situation got even weirder when they met Kaidash and Maxima, their new partners, as the letter said, who nobody had ever heard about them before. Unsettled by these events, both Shingo and Benimaru decided to get to the bottom of this matter. They joined their new mysterious teammates and entered the competition. Once they reached the finals, they met the host of the tournament, Chrysalid. He was one of the most trustworthy agents of Nests, a criminal cartel that specialized in bioengineering and human experimentation. Shingo learned that it was Nests who sent the invites to him and Benimaru, and it was them as well who kidnapped Kyo two years ago. But when Kaidash heard the origins of his creation, decided to betray Nests and attacked Chrysalid with the help of his cyborg friend. Seeing that they all have a common enemy, Benimaru and Shingo join the fight and help defeating Chrysalid. Once they bested Nest's top agent, the base started to collapse and Benimaru and Shingo were separated from Kadash and Maxima. Trying to avoid the falling debris, they ran as fast as they could, but Shingo fell during the escape. Fortunately, Benimaru went back and saved him from a certain death. If there was something they learned from this adventure, it was that Kyo had already escaped from nests, however, his whereabouts remained unknown. Continuing their search for Kyo, they participated to K-Wave 2000 with the hope of finding any clue that could lead them to their missing friend. Binimaru had the idea to team up with an old acquaintance of his, the agent Seth, who himself was in a mission from Hydern. Seth introduced them to the fourth member of the team, Lin. Although these unlikely allies had different motives from each other, they all share the same enemy. The tournament ended with a huge explosion that nearly killed them all, and the worst part was that they couldn't find any info about Kyo either. But it didn't matter at the end, as the Kusanagi heir decided to stop fighting nests alone and contacted his friends shortly after the competition was over. The next year, the good old Team Japan was formed once again. They entered the 2001 edition with the firm intention of putting an end to Nets and their plans. To complete the team, they invited Shingo, who couldn't believe himself that he'll get to fight side by side with his idol for the first time. Once the tournament ended and Nest destroyed for good, the members bid farewell to each other and the team disbanded. As much as he loved the time he spent with them, Shingo couldn't help but feel inferior to the members of Team Japan in terms of strength and skill. Alone and depressed, he was surprised by a visit from none other than his master's father, Saishu. The old man offered Shingo a chance to train under him, as he was tired of his son's cockiness and arrogance and wanted to teach him a lesson by training his own pupil. Maybe if the student surpasses the master, that would teach Kyo some humility. And so, Shingo spent the next two years training with the Kusanagi Patriarch in person. In 2003, Shingo joined Team Japan again, taking Kyo's place, who had to attend to an urgent matter with the possessors of the other two sacred treasures. During one of the matches, he shocked his teammates by his ability of producing a small flame spark while performing one of his attacks. But their surprise turned quickly into disappointment when they discovered that Shingo was just using a hidden lighter under his gloves. Still, the training with Saishu had certainly helped hone in his skills and his partners noticed it. Once the journey ended, they genuinely complimented his strength and efforts. When Shingo heard their praise, he got too cocky and declared that he was no longer Kyo's pupil, but his rival. Unfortunately for him, Kyo had just joined them at that very moment and heard Shingo as he proudly and loudly stated his bold claim. Despite his cry for help, Binimaro and Diamond refused to get involved and were content to just watch him as he received a very hot lesson in respect. Shortly after, he paid a visit to Shizuru at the hospital when he learned from Kyo what had happened to her. It was then when the young woman asked him to help Kyo and Iori in their search for Ash. 
He accepted without hesitation and promised her that he'll do his best to fulfill this task. When the next KOF was announced, Shingo did the impossible and somehow managed to convince the eternal rivals to ally with each other just for this edition. All three of them formed a pretty solid team and vanquished their opponents one by one while continuing their search for Ash without much trouble. Until Iori suddenly fell victim to the Riot of the Blood stage due to the growing presence of Orochi at the tournament's conclusion and severely injured Kyo without warning. The enraged Iori would have killed the unconscious Kyo if it wasn't for Shingo who kept interrupting his attacks, sustaining many wounds in the process. He continued to shield Kyo with his body until he could no longer move a muscle. It was then when Ash appeared out of nowhere and ironically saved both of them from the wild Iori by attacking him from behind and stealing his sacred jewel. Badly wounded, Master and Disciple were both sent to the hospital. While Kyo didn't want to wait for his complete recovery and escaped, Shingo was stuck in bed as his injuries were much more severe. He was visited by Benimaru and Diamond, who brought him a present from Shizuru. They also informed him that she took care of his treatment bills as she felt guilty for being the one who got him involved with all this story. Although he couldn't join his friends in KOF 13, he closely watched their matches on TV with Shizuru and even went physically to the arenas to cheer for them. Most of Shingo's techniques come from Kyo's fighting style. He mimics his master's moves to various degrees of success. Some of them are perfectly executed, while others clearly lack polish and finesse. He often forgets how to finish his moves and checks his notes in the middle of an attack. And of course, none of his techniques has the fire element in it. To compensate with this huge flaw, Shingo is one of the most robust characters when it comes to raw strength. Many of his attacks cause critical hits with a high damage output. His famous Shingo kick is the prime example. You can almost feel the bones of his opponent cracking when it connects. Also, it would be unjust to label him as no more than a Kyo clone. Shingo was able to apply his personal touch to some of his master's techniques and even invent his own moves. Other than that, he is one of the most joyful and light-hearted characters in the series. He is the goofball of any team he's in it and considers all KOF participants as friends, all of them except Iori, and that's just because he is Kyo's enemy. The fact that he himself was almost killed by the red-headed man has nothing to do with the antagonizing. Fun fact, the King of Fighters 98, although is considered as a non-canonical entry in the series, has a hidden plot. Similarly to SNK heroines, all the events that happened in KOF 98 are the result of Shingo dreaming, which explains why he is presented as a fully-fledged mid-boss and boldly challenges entire teams all by himself. He also dreams while awake of the day when he will finally be able to cast flames like Kyo, something that Team Japan make fun of all the time. This obsession of his knows no limits. He already gave his desperation moves names like Burning Shingo or Phoenix Flamer. It's kind of sad to see him obsessed with something that he will probably never obtain. But at the same time, the Kusanagis are far from being the only clan who can create and manipulate fire. And with that in mind, who knows, maybe someday Shingo will succeed in roasting his friends in more than one sense. If there are other characters that you'd like me to make videos about, feel free to mention them in the comment section. I'll submit the top 3 suggestions to a vote in my Patreon page. So even if you're not a patron, your opinion matters and you can still see the results of the votes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.